Hey guys, it's the Metal Blade 5, and because of the internet, there have been a ton of instances where somebody says the game sucks, and I say to myself, but I liked it. And that has especially been the case with games that the majority of people seem to hate. So I've decided to make a countdown about 10 games that make me feel like that the most. Keep in mind though, if you don't like a game on this list, that is fine. This is just my personal opinion, and please don't be a jerk about me liking a game that you hate. These games being on this list shows that I'm the minority, so why should you make a big deal about me liking something you don't? Also, for a game to be on this list, of course, has to be a game I have played, and has to be a game that the majority of people hate, or at least have a 50-50 ratio of people who like it and hate it. And I'm only using games that are hated as of now. So any games that were hated when they came out, but are mainly loved now, or not hated as much as when they came out, like the games you see on screen, will not be on this list. But now, let's begin my top 10 games I like, but everybody hates. Game and Wario. Now I do kind of agree with some of the haters' points about this game, which is why it's only at number 10, but I still kind of like this game. Game and Wario mainly received hate from fans and critics for not being like the other WarioWare games. It's more like Nintendo Land with WarioWare characters. But here's one thing that many people don't realize. It's actually a spin-off of the WarioWare games. Yes, it's a spin-off of a spin-off. People say that most of the one-player minigames suck, and I would say that quite a few of them are very generic. For example, the game design is just about drawing shapes at the right lengths and sizes. It's a little better than two-player, but not by much. But there are a few single-player games that I kind of like, such as Gamer, Taxi, Kung Fu, and Arrow. No, not that Arrow! That Arrow! Now, the multiplayer games in Game of Wario is where the game really shines. There's only four, but they're all pretty fun. There's Disco, Fruit, Islands, and Sketch. Me and my friends have a lot of fun with the multiplayer games, especially Sketch and Islands as well, where we've had some crazy moments happen to us. Overall, in my personal opinion, Game of Wario is a decent game. It has modes that I find fun, but it could have used more of them. It's best to buy the game at this point if you want to get it, because it, the price will have dropped significantly, which I would recommend getting it at a lower price. Okay, this entry is a bit of an interesting one. This is a game that everybody hates, and I actually agree with everyone else that this is a bad game, but I still kind of like it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. <sighs> Paper Mario Sticker Star. Now, like I just said, I do think this is a bad game, for the main reason being you don't get any experience from battles, which makes battles pointless which defeats the purpose of it being an RPG. And another thing, even though this is somewhat mi minor, one thing that really bothered me was that unlike the other Paper Mario games, Bowser doesn't talk at all. And Bowser's like the best character in the Paper Mario series because of his dialogue. There are no party members, which is one of the mechanics I loved in the first two games, and the story is absolute shit. It's so basic, and a bunch of stuff is never explained. This is especially annoying because Super Paper Mario had an amazing plot! But, with that said, I still kind of like this game. Even though battles are pointless, I actually really like the sticker mechanic. It forces you to be more strategic and carefully plan which stickers you want to use. The things I thought were a cool mechanic as a way of battling and solving puzzles, although the execution was kind of lame, and the game still has a lot of the charm that the Paper Mario series is known for. And the levels, while following the recurring Mario themes, do look nice and have a lot of charm to them as well. Again, I think Sticker Star is a bad game, but it's still a guilty pleasure of mine just because there are some things in this game that I actually do like. Now this entry isn't for one game. It's for the majority of a franchise. One thing that kind of annoys me when people say why a game is bad is when they use the explanation of it wasn't as good as a previous game in the series, unless the previous game you're talking about was only average. I mainly see this with Mario Kart games after Double Dash, and is the main reason why I think Double Dash is a little overrated. But we're not talking about Mario Kart, we're talking about Mario Party. Every single Mario Party after free, except for Advance because it's a terrible game, and Island Tour because I haven't played it. The only reason I hear why a Mario Party game after 3 is bad is because it's not as good as 1, 2, and 3. 
While I wouldn't call the Mario Party series spectacular or amazing, I still get a lot of enjoyment out of them. This includes the ones in this entry. They're not as good as the first three. Well, okay then, how about you talk about the actual game? The later Mario Parties still have a lot of creativity in terms of boards, items, and minigames. Take 7, for example. Every board is based off a different country and each have their own unique mechanics. While some of these in the games fall flat, I still find them fun and so do my friends. We have a lot of random hilarious moments in games after 3, even 9 and 10. Now, this is going to go on a bit of a rant about 9 and 10, but I think the car mechanic isn't that bad. It makes the boards more chaotic and the game more strategic. You can choose to stop somewhere that could screw over the other players or go somewhere that can help you take the lead. Plus, I like the idea of boss minigames as they were also pretty interesting. And to everyone who complains about the whole everyone is a winner thing, because even the last place person can get something in the minigame, it helps make the game more closer and interesting rather than having someone lag behind with no chance of winning other than some incredible luck. Overall, I don't think the later Mario Parties should get this much hate. I think people should take an unbiased look at them. Batman Arkham Origins. Now this is a game that I somewhat agree and disagree with the complaints of. The main complaint with this game is that it's very similar to Arkham City. Which is true, and while I do think Arkham City is by far the better game, I still like Arkham Origins a lot. Complaints I do have of Arkham Origins are that Warner Brothers tried to make the story intense by having the plot revolve around Batman being hunted down by eight assassins. The fact that the game is a prequel removes all tension from the story because we know Batman is going to survive. And there's one part where it looks like Alfred is dead, but if you played Arkham City, you will know that Alfred is alive and well, so all tension from this moment is sucked away. Also, the assassins don't actually have that big of a role in the game. You fight Deathstroke really early on and only once throughout the whole game, the Electrocutioner doesn't get a proper boss fight, and Deadshot and Shiva are just side quests. But with that aside, I still like this game. Some moves, upgrades, and mechanics were improved from Arkham City in my opinion, such as not needing to keep a Riddler thug conscious in order to interrogate him. And there are some new enemies, such as the martial artist, that I think are pretty cool and add some more variety. Plus, there are gadgets in this game that I love, such as the Remote Claw, despite the fact that it isn't required often and underutilized in required sections, and especially the Shock Gloves. They are overpowered, but they make swarms of shield and armor thugs so much easier to handle. I think the boss fights are decent. They're nowhere near as good as Arkham City's, but they're definitely better than Arkham Knight's boss fights. I also really like Roger Craig Smith's and Troy Baker's performances as Batman and Joker, respectively. They're not on the same level as Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, but I think they're pretty good, and speaking of Joker, I would have preferred it if they stuck with Black Mask as the villain rather than making it Joker all along, but I still find Joker enjoyable as with as is with the other Arkham games. Arkham Origins didn't have much, but I still think it's a decent entry in the Arkham series. Watch Dogs. What the hell is with the hate for this game? I'm not saying that because I like it. Some people have even called it one of the worst games of 2014, right up there with Sonic Boom and Assassin's Creed Unity, which are far worse than this game. The main reason this game gets so much hate is because when it was first revealed it had much better graphics. When it came out, the graphics were lower quality, and hackers were able to put the original graphics back in and found few performance issues. While I do think this was an incredibly stupid move on Ubisoft's part, I don't think it warrants so much hate for the game. Graphics don't mean everything, and it should be more of a reason to hate Ubisoft rather than to hate Watch Dogs. While the game is basically a GTA clone, which is one of the few other reasons it's hated, and while I do like GTA more, I think Watch Dogs does a lot of cool things. Really, the only major thing that I don't like in this game is that it didn't take any risks. I thought the hacking was a really cool mechanic, it makes killing criminals and escaping the police more interesting than other sandbox games in my opinion, as there are a lot of options and creative things for you to do when hacking. Also, in my opinion, I think this game has a better plot than GTA, seeing as how Aiden, the protagonist, is a vigilante rather than a criminal like in GTA, and I like Aiden as a character. While ScrewAttack call him a dumbass for trying to avenge the death of his niece because apparently nieces don't count as family members, he knows that it was his own fault because his niece's killers were trying to kill him for hacking money out of a hotel. And that's the reason why he becomes a vigilante, to make things right. Plus, 
can imagine his niece makes sense as he's very protective over his family, as you see with his sister Nikki and his nephew Jack. While Watch Dogs is a GTA clone and Ubisoft downgraded the graphics, I don't think that's enough to call it one of the worst games of 2014. And the game does have a lot of creative mechanics and, in my opinion, a better protagonist than GTA. Sonic Lost World, the Wii U version. This game isn't amazing, but I find some of the complaints incredibly stupid. Ignoring the City IGN review, let's get to some proper complaints with this game. One of the main complaints with this game is that it's slow. While Sonic is known for his speed, the games have always been platformers where speed is the reward for doing well. So I find this complaint unjustified. Another common complaint is that the parkour is terrible, but I've never actually heard a reason why. I thought the parkour was fine. Sure, it needs some improvements, but I would like to see it come back in future Sonic games, as it makes the levels more dynamic. I remember from some Call Me Johnny's review of this game that he had some issues with the homing attack and kick. I've never had that problem happen to me. Another complaint Johnny had was that most of the wits require the gamepad's touchscreen or gyroscope. That is actually not true. The only wits that require the gamepad's touchscreen and gyroscope are Rocket and Rhythm. And while the game doesn't tell you this, I've seen other games not tell you alternate ways to use move, and no one has complained about that before, so why should it be complaining about here? Another complaint I heard, which I found stupid, is that the bounce attack and homing attack buttons were the same button, when there's a clear difference in how you activate them that isn't hard to figure out. Be in the air to use the homing attack, and on the ground to use the bounce attack. Another complaint I found stupid was the fact that in the initial release of this game, you didn't get an extra life for getting 100 rings. Why is this such a huge problem? It is weird seeing as how other Sonic games and other platformers do this, but is that a main mechanic in the Sonic series and what made the other Sonic games good? No! The only complaint I agree with is the boss fights being lame. They are so pathetically easy and simple. A monkey could beat these boss battles. Now, finally onto the things I like about this game. While it's obvious that the game is copying Mario Galaxy, I think a lot of the levels are fun and creative. There are a few frustrating ones, but I had fun with most of them. I like most of the new Wisp Powers, and I love the returning ones from Colors. Even though the game is slower, Sonic is still pretty fast, and I'm glad that Sega did go back to focusing more on platforming rather than run as fast as you can. If I had to choose between playing Colors in this game, I would choose Colors every time, but I still think this game is good and doesn't warrant as much as the hate it gets. It's definitely better than Sonic Boom. I can't believe some people legitimately try to say Boom is better than this. Hell, some people said this game was worse than Ride to Hell Retribution. What the fuck is wrong with your heads? Now this is a game that I've been wanting to talk about for a while now, because I really like this game, but it gets a lot of hate as one of the first games that came to my mind when I thought of this list. Project Cross Zone. For any of you who don't know what this game is, it's a massive crossover game featuring characters owned by Namco Bandai, Capcom, and Sega. And holy crap, look at how many franchises are represented in this game. The roster, including heroes and villains, is massive. The game itself is a strategy RPG, similar to Fire Emblem, but when you fight an enemy, the style changes to that of a fighting game where you pull off moves and combos to kill enemies. A bunch of characters are paired together, and some are on their own where they act as a support, and you can summon other pairs near you for support as well. And each pair has an awesome and flashy super move that does massive damage. Some even reach injustice levels of awesomeness. Now to the main complaint that haters of this game bring up. It's repetitive. And while I admit that is true, but to me, it's a fun sort of repetitive. Like, you know you're doing the same thing, but you're having fun while doing it. When I finally played the game after seeing videos I on YouTube, I had way more fun than I thought I would. Although, it doesn't help that the game is incredibly long. My first playthrough was about 50 hours long, and an average chapter ranged from about an hour to an hour and a half. So, if you play this game, I wouldn't recommend playing it for long periods of time. Have some short play sessions and it'll be more fun. Some people do also say that there is barely any strategy in it, but as Colas would say, I disagree, because you still need to plan out things like, should I use an item, how many items should I use this turn, which enemy or boss should I attack, 
should I save my cross points to use a super move on multi-attack later, or should I use it now? And the final complaint I hear is that you have to fight the same bosses over and over. And that is a legitimate complaint, but it goes back to what I said in my Skyward Sword Let's Play, where some gamers reuse bosses a lot, and nobody complains about that, so why should people complain about it in this game? Even though I think this game handles it worse than other examples, I still wasn't that bothered you had to fight the same bosses again. One thing I really like about this game is that I actually didn't know most of the characters in this game. I knew most of the Capcom characters, the only Namco characters I knew were the Tekken characters, and I didn't know any of the Sega characters aside from Oolala. But the game does an amazing job of teaching you about these characters, so I ended up learning a lot about these characters I never heard of before, and actually started to like them and care about their personal stories. If I had a free disc capture card, I would probably let's play this game, although it would be like my equivalent of Xenoblade Chronicles or Chuka Conroy. In summary, the game is repetitive, but fun in my opinion, don't play it for long periods of time, it does a great job of teaching you about the characters, and I'm really looking forward to the sequel coming next year. I mean, Krom and Lucina are going to be in it. That raised my hype levels to over 9,000. And the sequel is also getting Fiora from Xenoblade Chronicles and... Sega to Sanshiro? This entry belongs to a few games because they are hated for similar reasons. And the reasons why are, in my personal opinion, incredibly stupid. And they're all part of the same franchise. Pokemon Generation 4 and 5. I keep hearing that some people like one and hate the other, but I don't know why, I like them both. Let's start with Gen 4 because it came first. Duh. I have never heard an actual reason why some people hate Gen 4. I thought it was great. Pokemon Pearl was the first Pokemon game I played, so I obviously liked it enough to continue playing Pokemon, but I'm not cutting to any slack because of that. The only person I've seen give a reason as to why they hate Gen 4 is Ted from Brain Scratch Commentary, who hates Gen 4 for two reasons, as, at least as far as I'm aware of. He hates Bidu, which is only one Pokemon in a generation that introduced over a hundred new Pokemon, you'll hear me saying that a lot, and because apparently there's a Team Galactic Grunt that uses a level 40 Wurmple, although that's probably an exaggeration. I'm not trying to make fun of Ted's opinion, but those reasons I think are very minor complaints. Bidoof is one Pokemon when there is uh, over a hundred other ones, and that Galactic Grunt is only one trainer in a game with hundreds of them. No offense Ted, but I find that really nitpicky reason to say an entire game, and a very big game like Pokemon, is bad. Gen 4 introduced tons of new Pokemon, which I love, including my favorite Pokemon of all time. Brought in some great changes to help balance the game and making battle battling less confusing with the physical special split. Had a great plot with probably the best Pokemon villain, Cyrus, and has amazing music like what you're hearing right now. Moving on to Gen 5, Whip has some similar reasons for why people hate it. Whenever someone brings up why Gen 5 is in quotes, the worst generation, they always mention two Pokemon, Garboda and Vanillish. Similar to Bidoof, Garboda and Vanillish are only two Pokemon in a generation that brought in 156 new Pokemon, the most in any generation. So what about the other 154? Also, a lot of people say Gen 5 sucks for things that other Pokemon games do. As Josh Scorcher said in his top 10 overheated games, there have always been Pokemon based off of waste, there have always been Pokemon based off of inanimate objects, there have always been Pokemon based off of real life animals. Why should this game be hated for things that every Pokemon game does? The only reason I see the few that don't mention Garbodon Vanillas is because the villain, Getsis, is generic. And I will admit, he is very generic, but I did like the plot point of Team Plasma saying that people are being cruel to Pokemon. It makes the player question their actions even though people have proven that Pokemon battling is not animal abuse. And like with Gen 4, Gen 5 added tons of Pokemon I love, helped balance the game further, and has amazing music. The main complaints I hear for this game, in my opinion, are incredibly minor that they shouldn't be used as a reason to say these games are bad. 
Oh yeah, also, I kind of liked the idea of Garota, and I thought Vanillus was hilarious, so take that! Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Come on, you all saw this coming! To anyone who may be new to my channel, I'll explain that I did an entire Let's Play of Skyward Sword, and brought up my arguments against the complaints people commonly bring up about the game where appropriate. And I also tried to do all of them during the credits, but I swear I remember the credits being longer, so we didn't get to go through all of them, but here we go. The motion controls suck. I never had any issues with the motion controls. There was a moment in my LP where I thought there were issues, but later realized that it was my own fault. I actually discovered during my first playthrough of the game that the only time the game doesn't read your movements is when you swing the Wii Remote incredibly fast and all over the place, as if you're having a seizure. As Fallout's Minion said, unless you're over cumbersome or attempting to generate an infinite mass punch, your movements won't have a problem registering. The sky is empty! While there isn't a lot to do in the sky, there is still quite a few things to do. I think the issue is more how far apart everything is, because it's definitely not empty. I see similar things like that from with Twilight Princess. It's too linear! I hate this complaint. Every 3D Zelda game has linear aspects to it. Take Ocarina of Time, for example. You beat the Forest Temple, then you go to the Fire Temple, then the Water Temple, then the Shadow Temple, then the Spirit Temple. You see? All the Zelda games do it, and nobody complains about it there! What? The surface areas are not connected? That has nothing to do with it! Terrible backtracking! Again, every 3D and a lot of the 2D Zelda games force you to backtrack. When you're playing an adventure game, you should expect to go back to places you've been before. B is so annoying. First off, I know I'm not pronouncing her name right, I explained in the LP. I do see why people find B annoying, but I generally think she actually can have some good advice from time to time, and she didn't annoy me as much as others. B is actually my third favorite Zelda companion because of her role in the plot. Kirahim is gay! Wow. Way to go, you just ruined your whole argument by using homophobic language. Girahim's sexual orientation has not been revealed, and I don't think he has one. Sure, he's odd, but that's still pretty offensive to homosexuals, and Girahim being odd is why me and a lot of others like him so much. Girahim is one of my favorite characters in the Zelda series for how insane he is. He's like the Zelda equivalent of the Joker. Now, let's finally mention the good things about Scarlet Sword. It has an amazing plot, as it shows how the entire Zelda series started, as well as giving the origins of the Triforce and the Master Sword. The game has amazing dungeon design with creative puzzles and items for to use. Some of the boss battles are epic and really intense. And the music. God, the music is amazing. Just listen to the OST if you haven't already. While I don't think Skyward Sword deserves a 10 out of 10, as there are some legitimate problems with the game, I still think it's an amazing game and doesn't deserve the hate that it gets. Now, some of you are probably going to be shocked, because I bet some of you don't know that this game is mainly hated. Despite the fact that this game received critical acclaim, when it came out, many fans hated it. And while I admit this game isn't perfect, it comes incredibly close in my personal opinion, because this is a game that I absolutely love, and I only started to see people hate it when I saw Josh Scorcher's Top 10 Overrated Games Countdown, which was the one thing I have ever disagreed with him on, which I mentioned in part one of my top 20 favorite YouTubers. And while that is his opinion, and I completely respect it, I still think this game doesn't deserve all the hate it gets. Here we go. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Yes, Galaxy 2 is hated. I loved the first Galaxy game. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and I personally thought Galaxy 2 was better. The main reason haters mention for why this game sucks is that they say that it's just Galaxy 1, but with Yoshi. While Galaxy 2 didn't add too much from Galaxy 1, it definitely added more than just Yoshi. It added Cloud Mario, the Drill, and Rock Mario, which are all useful in their respective missions, especially Cloud Mario. It added all new galaxies, new mechanics, new and fun bosses, and brought some incredible level design, and I thought improved on Galaxy 1, and Galaxy 1 already had amazing level design, so that's quite a feat. While I didn't like Starship Mario as much as the Comet Observatory as an overworld, I did like how it kept it a bit smaller, and made reaching galaxies on the level select much, much quicker. In all honesty, 
The somewhat lack of new content, Starship Mario not being as interesting as the Common Observatory, the final battle being incredibly easy and lame, and the fact that Rosalina doesn't appear much in Galaxy 2, are the only complaints I have with this game. I did not have any other issues with this game. I think it's amazing, and if you, if you knew what I had to do in order to get this game when it came out, then you know it was definitely worth it. I'm not trying to undermine Galaxy 1 because I love that game too. The difference between how much I like them is so tiny, you wouldn't be able to see it if I showed you. But what I say about Galaxy 2 is my absolute honest opinion. I love this game. The gameplay is amazing, it looks gorgeous for a Wii game, the music is outstanding, the level design and creativity is absolutely fantastic, the bosses except for the final boss are really fun and unique, I love to refight the bosses in this game over and over again, the power-ups are a joy to use for both Mario and Yoshi, Yoshi is incredibly fun to play with, to me, the swimming feels much smoother, which was an issue I had in the first game. I really can't find anything about this game other than the coins I mentioned earlier that I dislike. When I remember when when uh, Stone Call Me Johnny was doing his uh, Mario Marathon, where he did the 3D games, I remember after his Mario Galaxy review, somebody left in the comment this really long comment about like, Ha! Finally, an unbiased review of Galaxy 2 so you get to see how bad it is, something along those lines. And it got me kind of nervous for Galaxy 2 review, but Johnny didn't jump on the hate bandwagon, and I like that. Not just because he was agreeing with my own opinion, just more to the fact that obviously I didn't want him to just automatically be like all the others, just say he didn't add anything new, it's not fun, completely undermined all the good stuff in this game. Should I really say this? You know what? I will. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is my favorite Mario game. Please don't kill me!